Uh, Trita Parsi joining us now from Washington, the president of the National Iranian American Council and the author of Treacherous Alliance. Let me ask you, Trita, why should Americans care? Of course they should care because at the end of the day, Iran is a pivotal state in the Middle East. It has an influence in many of the arenas that the United States is involved in, in Afghanistan and in Iraq. And of course, the Iranian people tend to have tremendously positive feelings towards the United States. And now when they're going through all of this and it can have a significant impact on the U.S., I think it's obvious that Americans should care. Trita Reza uh, Saya here, thank you for, for, for joining us. I think uh, a lot of people agree the key to what's happening here is the Revolutionary Guard. Many agree that Iran is no longer ruled by uh, clerics. It's become a militarized state dominated by the Revolutionary Guard. Compare the Revolutionary Guard today to the Shah's army back in the late 70s. Many people were intimidated by the Shah's army, but they ended up backing down to the protest. Any chance of that happening with the Revolutionary Guard? Well, you have very different situations, but one of the things that I was struck by uh, watching many of these clips on the Internet today was the number of clips in which the protesters overwhelmed uh, the security forces and the security forces voluntarily surrendered and joined the protesters. We didn't see that, at least not in these numbers, back in the summer. And it may be an indication that things are changing. Do you want uh, President Obama to actually come out and say something more to support this? I think President Obama came out, well, the White House did this morning, and they said something that I thought was very, very thoughtful and positive. The administration has walked a fine balance in the sense of not getting itself too close to the protesters in a way that could be harmful to them, and at the same time not being so silent so that the protesters may believe that the United States is not with them morally, and the hardliners may think that they can get away with all of these human rights violations with impunity. There's been some times in which, I, in my opinion, the administration was a little bit too quiet on the human rights side. But I think in the last couple of weeks, we've seen how the White House has tried to rectify that and speak more frequently in condemnation of the human rights violations taking place. All right. Thank you for joining us from New York. Thank you for